Hey, it's Freiberger, and I'm about to show you a sample episode of a show that we do on MotorTrendOnDemand.com that's called Roadkill Extra. It shows up every single weekday. It's got stuff like outtakes from shows, behind the scenes stuff, tech tips, you name it. You can see them all with a free trial at MotorTrendOnDemand.com. Hey, it's Freiberger here, and I'm about to tell you that we have more of an organized plan about our project cars for Roadkill Garage than we've ever had. We know about like five of them that we're gonna build, and this is one of them. This thing has become an internet sensation just through a few posts on Instagram. This is Steve Dulcich's 1968 Barbacuda. Yep, this is a 1968 Plymouth Barracuda, and unfortunately, it had left the farm here and it had gone out to Ventura, California, and there was those big wildfires, and as you can see, the fire went through this car and completely toasted it to the ground. When Steve sent it over there, it was all black primer and everything. It's like a factory turquoise car. Unfortunately, our buddy who was storing this thing, he lost his whole house and everything. It's, it's like a true disaster. The, the fires and the mudslides out here in California were actually no joke whatsoever. But the car was lost. I think I've talked Steve into actually bringing it back. What this is, is what's called a Mopar A-Body. It's the second generation of the A-Body. The very first Plymouth Barracuda was in 1964, and it was a version of the Valiant, and it was the first car that had like the fastback on the A-Body body style. And so they had 64 to 66 was like one generation of the Barracuda. And then this generation, which is the 1968, would have been the same body style in 67, 68, and 69. In 1969 was actually the very first official Mopar Plymouth, you know, branded use of the term Cuda. Everybody was calling the Barracuda Cuda, and they had the performance models, you know, like a 340 and things like that. But Cuda was in 69 was actually on the stripe of the very rare model that came with a factory 440 big block in it. Up to that point, these cars had only had small blocks in them. In the early years, they had slant sixes and they had 273s, then 318s, and then in 68 out came the 340. And then they also started putting 3D3 big blocks in them. And most famously in 1968, they made the factory Hearst Hemi Cuda and Hemi Dart. It was a factory drag racing car that came with fiberglass fenders and a fiberglass hood and a 426 Hemi engine. And really, I think it's the vision of those things that made Steve really, really want this car. It's what made him think that it was super cool. Personally, I have always thought of this as sort of like, I hate to say it, but like a chick's car. <laughs> I don't know, when I was in high school, the girls would have these and the dudes would have the darts and that's always sort of stuck with me. I like the dart better, Steve likes the Cuda better and he really wants to restore this, but I'm not gonna let him. We're just gonna basically clean this thing up and go, in my vision anyway, I can't promise this is what's gonna happen because you know Steve could lose his mind and decide that he's just gonna sandblast this and start painting it like at any minute. I could go inside and start working and come back out and Steve will be here like bondoing this car. But I wanna like general mayhem it. Clean it up just so that it doesn't get, you know, more rusty, more scum, more dust and smoke all over us. And leave the windows out of it. It probably needs a rear window to maintain the right body shape and then put a windshield in it and we're gonna put an engine in it. And we had an idea today about what engine specifically we're going to put in it. And I'm not gonna tell you right now, we might as well leave something to surprise, but I will tell you it is not an engine that you have seen us install in a car before. So that'll be interesting for you. And other than that, I just wanna hose it out and make it run and drive and breathe life back into it and not let the fire be a complete bummer. But let's look at some of the stuff that happened during the fire. I've seen a lot of cars, like I remember when Reggie Jackson had a massive car fire in his warehouse and they will melt so hot that the sheet metal becomes all warped. I'll say the metal feels like a little weird on this car, you can see that it's like soft, but it doesn't have that really bad warpage all throughout it, which is why I think it's still solid. To be safe, we'll probably put subframe connectors and stuff like that in it, but it's not that bad. But look at this, the pot metal in this signature 1968 round side marker light is completely melted and dripping. 
I thought that was pretty funny. Up in the front, of course, the plastic in the grill is completely gone. Well, not completely. There's some metal in there, but the aluminum is all melted. The plastic is all melted out. I probably just want to make our own grill on it. Steve might want to get some reproduction ones. Time will tell. The Barracuda badge sort of survived, but look how there's like solder or something that has come out of it here on the edges. I thought that was kind of interesting, but these hood inserts survived. The glass, look at this. Um, the glass basically just shattered out of the thing, but there are also like bits of completely molten glass in here. And who knows what that is? Oh, you know what that might be actually? Is there's a bunch of Bondo and lead that melted out of this thing. See right here? This is a factory seam where they would put two pieces of metal together and the factory back then covered that with lead. Just like the old time customizing technique, it was literally lead. That's all melted out of the car. Look how the uh, pot metal mirror just broke. This is funny, the whole door handle just broke off. I mean, it's not funny, it's kind of sad, but it's just interesting to sort of look at, at the abuse this thing took. Interestingly, you know how you always see in the movies when you know they'll like fire bullets at a car, it'll be on fire and it explodes? Well, the gas tank didn't explode at all. In fact, I think you can hear there's still a little bit of gasoline in it and it did not explode. I think the fire came from the top and moved this way because you can see this part of the car right here is less burned than the rest of it. This taillight survived, this badge is perfectly good. This is the original color right here. I think it's called Surf Turquoise. It's a really cool color they had in 1968. That's the original color. And then this is the black primer that was on top of it before it got, you know, completely barbecued off. But this corner kind of survived. Obviously we've put tires on it since it was in the fire. Those had also melted down into the ground. So it's a roller now and everything. Overall, it's a pretty giant bummer, but I think it's really cool that the audience has like glommed onto this thing and they're not gonna let Steve be depressed about it. They're gonna force us to actually make it run and drive. And when we do, you will see it on Roadkill Garage. This has been Roadkill Extra with a giant spoiler about the Barbecuda. You need more Roadkill Extra? Go sign up right now.